here we go with another Eldritch Moon draft. Um, we have opened our rare, and it is a Bloodhole Priest, which is a card I've played a couple of times and been very impressed with. Now, we all know there are some costs associated with first picking a gold card because it's very difficult to ensure that you are going to play it. But Bloodhole Priest is a fairly splashable one, number one. And number two, there's nothing really in the pack that jumps out at me, you know? If there was some high power profile uncommon or something like that, I would be happy to take that instead. You know, I know black isn't considered to be particularly powerful in the set, but murder, you know, comes to mind. Certain death is a strong card. Grizzled Angler requires building around anyway. And some to get range have gone down on a tiny bit. So I'm going to take the Blood Hall Priest. And, you know, we don't have to end up in black red, but we can see how it goes. Just a strong card. I mean, once you read four mana four for you, you can kind of stop reading the card, honestly. Um, now, an amazing follow up to this. Oh, go away. Pardon me. Is this Blood Hall Priest? Sorry, is this Olivia's Dragoon? Um, because it lets us madness this out on turn three for one. But it also, you know, lets us empty our hand to madness. It also fits in the vampire theme, and that it's a vampire of itself. And this is just kind of a perfect follow up, which I'm very happy to get. Now, of the cards in this pack, we have only three choices if we're going to play Black Red. And they are Strange Augmentation, Succumb to Temptation, and Thermal Alchemist. Thermal Alchemist is a strong card, but it's kind of a build around, if I'm honest. It's come to temptation I've been unimpressed with. Um, black green. Uh, well, the best card in the pack is probably like Advanced Stitch Wing or Ingenious Scab. You know? Um, the other ones are all just fine. I'm going to take the Thermo Alchemist, I think, because I really am, do want to do this. And, like, this seems. There we go, perfect. And, like, this seems to be a good pairing to be in, honestly. Like, this is a really solid start to a draft, and I don't really want to stray from that too much. We can get rewarded there with the fourth pick murder. Like I said, people are really down on black in this format. And it is the worst color in the draft format. I'm pretty certain of that. But I really don't think it's that far behind. But people seem to be overestimating how how bad it is. Because, you know, we're getting these. Look, it's fifth pick Moon Miracle. This is an amazing removal spell. Just an excellent card. And I'll take it and happily play it. Happily, happily play it. Um, on that note, now, it, the thing is, oh, this is very interesting, because Markov Crusader is quite good. Thermal Alchemist is quite good. Obviously, these are really good multiples. But you really want to be having lots of instants and sorceries. Stensia Innkeeper is a card I've been pretty impressed with, actually. I think it might be what I pick here. We're probably going to wheel the Markov Crusader out of the first pack, honestly. I think I might keep, take the Stensia Innkeeper. It's a vampire. That doesn't matter that much, but it can. It matters more if you get a... Um, Stensia Masquerade in back three, honestly. Things like that. But Innkeeper is actually a card I've been pretty impressed with. Nah, this is a bit of a. <laughs> Let's just say this is a bit of a poopy pack. I don't know why I turned into a five year old for that moment, but honestly, this kind of a poopy pack. Drenyar Behemoth's a, a good card, I guess, but even without that, Backwood Survivalist is fine. I mean, for us, it's a terrible pack, obviously, and probably end up taking this Field Creeper over this Wailing Ghoul. Um, oh, another one of these. I'll buy that. So we need to fill in some gaps here. I mean, Boonhammer Cool, we can cast on turn three. Same with Murder. Won't be doing it very often. In the dream world, you can cast this on turn three, and then you're really cooking. But black certainly seems open. We got this fourth and this fifth. So if it's if it's open in this direction, we've cut it here, so it should be pretty open in the opposite direction as well. At least from the people immediately to our left. I would imagine. Um, and like, you know, black they say said they say black is the worst colour in this in the set, but if we get two murders and a boon of Emmercool. You know, doesn't really matter what else we got out of black, really. Even if, like, Illusor Green's a strong card. Um, doesn't really matter what else we got at that stage. Barret Hostility, I've actually been reasonably impressed with. Just a rock solid combat trick. I find myself ending up with a, aside from the blue red spells deck, obviously. Oh, someone did take the Crusader. 
Hmm. I find myself ending up with a large amount of creatures in this set. Spells danger. Scone Intentions totally playable. A little bit of a nombo with the hellbent mechanic here, but it's still good. Red light. <laughs> I've not been impressed with either of these cards. People have been playing this against me, though. Maybe if we really want to have a million vampires, I can play it, but I'm really not a fan of this card at all. I'm just going to start on the board. We already have six creatures. We don't need that. So currently, we have a draw spell, a combat trick, two premium removal spells, and some pretty good creatures. I mean, this Thermal Alchemist looks a little awkward here. But, you know, he might be on the chopping block, honestly. Olivia's Dragoons, I want as many of those as I can get, I think. Um, since back that I do not like. Um, not an exciting pack for us. I'm going to take this Graph Rats. If we can grab a Midnight Scavengers, which seems to be going pretty late, that's pretty good. You know, if you can actually make the Tutoring Host, it's incredibly strong. Assembled office, well Iron Pariah. Oh boy, let me just chill out for a sec. Um these are both insane rares. Our opponent took some sort of premium all com uncommon over them. Um these are both amazing cards. I might just take Bold Iron Pariah. If I'm out of 3 3 flying, fine. Um and if you do get to flip it. It's got mana as well. If you do get to flip it, you just win the game. You know, you get a 6-5 flying, and I mean, you obviously trade three of your creatures in. You get a 6-5 flying, your opponent sacks three creatures, that's no joke. Now, the only consideration, maybe, is that this is slightly more likely to wheel than this is. Uh, I've played Assembled Alphas, and it is just, it just demands an answer immediately. But Vol Voltaire Pry is pretty similar. Gosh, I don't know. I haven't played with the Pry yet. I think I want to take the Pry. I'm going to experiment a little bit and take the Pariah, just because I haven't tried it yet. Plus, we're building vampires, you know? It's all flavor. It's got Madness. I mean, it's Madness cost is triple black, so it's a pretty rough time. But you can technically cast it on turn three with this. <laughs> if we go Swamp, 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 boom, get a Voltar and Pariah down on turn three. Mind you, on turn three, it's not that impressive, because it's just a 3-3 three, three flyer. But... Where did Vampire seems perfect? It's a Vampire. It's got Madness. Um, Check this rates is good, too, but obviously not in our colors. This card's fine as well. Sensei Banquet. I originally thought it said... Um, creature or player, and even then I wasn't overly impressed with it, but it actually just says player, and that makes it awful. <laughs> just awful. We are wanting for three drops. I mean, I know that Voldar and Mariah, Where Did Vampire, and Blood Hall Breeds can all technically be managed out at three, but we're lying, relying on drawing our Dragoon to do that, so don't want to put too much stake in that happening all that often. Um, where the vampire would be good, but Boon of Emrakul is ideal, and I will be taking it. Vampire Cutthroat I like quite as well, actually, but Boon of Emrakul is perfect. It's also a turn 3 play. I've neglected that because I put those over there away from the creatures, but those are valid turn 3 plays. Mm-hmm. 
Got that Billy Ocean song stuck in my head. Red light means danger. Cause red light means warning. Um, do I want yet another innkeeper? I mean, they're really good. Um, I probably want this abundant maw. Mix it up a little bit. Good drain effect. You know. Oh, it's a very late for those. Um, I guess I'll take that. I'm not playing another Succumb's Temptation or a Strange Obligation, so I guess I'll probably just cut the Choking Restraints. Ooh, hello. Insatiable Gorgers. That's a strong card. So is Bloodhound, but Insatiable Gorgers is... Gr that's re uh, so many vampires. Is this even that good? Um, I mean, it's, n I mean, what's the card I'm thinking of from Feathers of the Strap? The 5-4. God, I don't remember. The other, there's a similar card in Shadows of the Strap. This is not as good as that. Um, it's yet another 4-drop. I'm better off just taking the Foul Bloods here. To the 3. We have so little that actually cares about vampires. I mean, this has madness or whatever, but yeah, I think I'm going to take this, honestly. There we go. Happy to get you. Don't want this four drop. Happy to get the five drop though. I can play you. This um thermal alchemist look like looks like he's not making the cut, which is fine. I'm not probably cutthroat might though. Skulk one life link is annoying. There are some games where that's just you play that on turn one, it's like, well, this is gonna gain me five life and deal five to you. So, yeah, there are some games where your opponent plays an 0-2. Well, I guess you still get to gain life. There's some games where your opponent plays a 1-3. And then you're in, in bad shape on that one. Need some more discard outlets. Um, and then just more good black and red cards released aside from that. We have two Boon of Emeralds and a Murder. So our removal is pretty solid. Plus kind of Voldar and Pariah, you know. With a Voldar and Pariah in the deck, you do kind of want a lot of creatures. was almost a really terrible pack for us until we hit this Voldaren Duelist. Don't really like a madness to that some percentage of the time. Hello. Good madness neighbor there. Oh my god. Oh my god. Has to be this though, right? This is just a bomb. Sorry. Gosh. Gosh, that's sad. Um, Don't work, mentor. We have a lot of vampires, I guess. Probably rather just have the 2 2 over this field creeper, though, right? I think so. Fire Temper would have been insane, but I need the disc. I don't need, but the disc outlets are nice here, you know? Because we have a good few things that do have madness. Deadweight. Can I play a Deadweight? Absolutely. Over a Tooth Collector, for sure. Man, premium removal is just flying around in black, isn't it? So you, know, you play this on turn 5, on turn 6 you discard this to it. Boom, you have a 5-5 five, five flyer. You get a 4-4 four, four into play. You can do the same with this. That's pretty nice. Might be a deck for Tormenting Voice on turn 5. Technically, do with this as well. Does something else have madness? No. Mokro Necropod's actually really good. It actually just is a really good card. <laughs> I might just play that over like Barret Hostility or something. Very little synergy about vampires here, actually. Because I didn't take the strong Kirk Mentor. Because I'm unimpressed with it, honestly. And the awkward thing about the Vampire Cutthroat is it has Skulk, which is its evasion, so you don't really want to grow it. Um, but then it's only draining for one a turn. So you want to pump it. So you get that's a little bit of an awkward way to go about things there. This deck actually seems rather strong, if I'm honest. I'm pretty happy with this. So I'm really sad about that Fire Temper, but Markov Dreadnought is just so good.
A lot of twins of Mario State, absolutely. It's a good madness target, man. We'll absolutely play that over. Maybe this card's next up again. Oh, I said madness at the first, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> um, didn't even think about that at all. Um, <clears throat> I'm pretty happy with this deck. Got a nice little black red vampire madness deck going here. Um, abundant Maw, I don't know what we're going to be sacking that for, but it's just a nice late game card, same as Morphic Necropod. Um, we have a 17 creatures, which is good for the Bulldown Pariah. We have some sweet removal, some reasonable card draw. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with this altogether. I don't think this worked out well. We hedged a little at first picking this, and, but it's obviously paid off. So um, yeah, let's see if we can't put together a couple of wins. And if we can't, I'll be rather sad. Probably a 10-7 deal, really. I mean, I suppose now I think about it, I don't have very many red spells at all. Maybe there's an 11-6. We have no double red, we have some double black, so maybe there's an 11-6. God, I feel like I can get away with 10 swamps, so I don't even need one. I think I might need more for activating something and madnessing something in the same turn, but you know, I feel like 10-7's fine. I always feel so awkward when I've drafted nearly mono red de or nearly monocolor decks like this. You know, we could feasibly pretty easily cut these four cards and build a mono black vampire's deck with this, this, and maybe these. Or sorry, the rotten heart cool. But this is just a lot of power level, and these cards are really annoying. And this is a really good late game card as well, or kind of mid game card. So I think I'm gonna leave them in. I think it'd be foolish to take them in. I think seven, because I want to be casting these, really. So yeah, let's see um, how it goes. Okay, round one. We would love to play first. Gonna move this mic slightly out of the way. Ugh, one lander is gonna be a no go. I guess this is fine. So come to temptation, digs us out of this a little bit. We get to scry any lands to the bottom. We have red, so we have a two drop. This is about as good as these come. I guess I have to keep that. Um, because the risk of just not drawing a land is, you know, too annoying and too high. And I mean, the cutthroat's not bad. And like I said earlier, in some matchups it's going to be, you know, suboptimal. But against other decks, it might do pretty well. Red's a little scary if he has the Thermal Alchemist and that kind of thing. Then there's not a lot that our cutthroat can do. But if he doesn't, then we're golden. This is an island that I'm scared. Okay. Ooh, the mirror match. We I thought we were pretty open there. Oh, he has the Thermal Alchemist. That's annoying. <clears throat> That's pretty good, actually. I will be attacking. If he blocks, I will deadweight and play a cutthroat. I'll be pretty happy about it. Because deadweight here is going to save us some ludicrous amount of life. Ooh, opponent being savvy. Okay, I see how it is. Let's come to temptation, which is a little scary against a thermal alchemist, if I'm honest. But if it digs us to gas, it has to be worth it. Go away. Three to kill is okay. I'm just going to do this. Give me gas, please. I mean, it's not on lands. It's not something, but that, it'll be good later. Um, hmm. I suppose you just dead weight and then play a Skurs Galax, Skurs Dag Supplicant. It's probably the way to go. I'm actually going to play Vampire Cutthroat plus Field Creeper. The reason being this way, this has haste if I draw a land next turn. 
I mean, this can't attack through this any better than these can, and this at least gains life when it gets blocked, so. I suppose I could have technically attacked with three mana still up and probably would have gotten through, which would have been smarter. Now that I think about it, there's no reason to play those pre combat. That might have. Because, you know, he didn't block last turn when we had three mana up, so I assume he wouldn't block this turn either. Okay. I think the Vampire Cutthroat has to come out in this matchup. Uh, tormenting Bliss. We would probably got to go here, I think. Supplicant. Don't think he's going to do a lot for me this game. Much better. Good card. Oh, no attacks at all. That's awful. Yeah, Cutthroat's got to go. Because Cutthroat just runs into that Farber Government and dies. That being said, our opponent's deck just seems to be a pile of red and black cards. These three cards don't really go together at all. That's bonus bumbles well for us at least. Again, I could attack with the ghoul, but it just blocks the revenant. And gains a lot, so there's not much need in doing that. I could bluff, but honestly at this stage I don't think he's buying he's buying it anymore. Sweet card. Mark our Crusader in one hit will undo all the damage that Thermal Alchemist has done as well, which is nice. Or near enough to all of it anyway. What you got, buddy? I do not want to view the video I just recorded. Thank you very much. I suppose we should probably should set this in case. Um, blah, 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 blah. There we go. Ignore that, please. <laughs> get the land there. Okay. A little scared, but I'm going to get in with the Crusader. I'm a little concerned he's going to get fiery tempered or something. He's got three cards in hand. but Let's go for it. Oh, plus one plus one first strike. Bombardment. That's well, two for one still. That's still gain all the life. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I am A-OK -okay with that. That's right, next round probably should just start growing though. Dread Knight. We have enough mana now that we can cast our madness spells off it as well, even the pariah. Be sure we where this guy might have the assembled alphas from earlier. Goes against my crusader. It's fine. I mean, the life looks annoying, but it's far from the end of the world. Time to get huge. Crunch. Probably putting this and this in front of that. Get the zombie back. Ooh, that's good. That's really good. Our opponents aren't pretty low life total though. You can only can't really take very many hits from this. We'll gain four here. You can gain one more, I guess. You aren't just not coming in with that man. She's technically dead right now. Was that message sent? It was just now. 
Got seven lands. Oh, da, da. Okay. Uh, dead on board. Unless there's a rule for this. Which would have to be murder, I think. So we didn't have it, so that's good. Um, immediately, get you out of my deck, please. Um, and probably... I mean, I probably don't love this either against the guy. Um, I might rather have another Tormenting Voice. Um, yeah, they're pretty similar cards. Um, and then probably won't, like... I don't know, maybe this Bardo so is pretty fine. And that makes our seven mountains a little better as well. In a weird way. Yeah, by adding in two more red cards. Makes our deck feel a little less one-sided. It's still definitely a 10-7 split, not a 9-8, I don't think. Just because of the double blacks. Uh, I'll keep this. Yeah, um, it's got insane removal spells if we draw a land. Well, if we draw a swamp, I guess. And it's got a tormenting voice to help get us there if we can discard this or this. Of course, if we draw something madness, we kind of want to wait to use that, but don't always have that luxury. Keep her digging for lands. Nope, we got a land anyway, so that's nice. And now, of course, we do need another swamp for the murder, but if we can boon early, I'm pretty happy with that. If we draw a swamp this turn, yeah, I might just tormenting voice away a mountain. I don't think that'd be crazy at all. So we drew a swamp this turn, so I am going to tormenting voice away a mountain, I think. Wow, okay. Well, it's kind of good to, good to get those out of the way, I guess. Um, that Scourge Wolf is going to get Boon of Evercult, I think. And I'm probably going to play Estensia and Keeper shortly after that. Have this Murder for something big and scary later, and a Marker of Crusader to regain our life total. Ooh, that's probably going to get Booned, actually. Don't want to be taking four off that every turn. So I won't. Plus, I mean, Estensia and Keeper forces our opponent to use a trick to push the Scourge Wolf through. Yeah, that trick can be even a, a Galvanic Ball Warband, because that have, the wolf has first strike, but it's still guaranteed a card anyway. Ember Eye Wolf I'm not afraid of at all, especially if our opponent's missing a land drop and we get to freeze a land here. That's really good. That's really good. Man, we're flooding. Honestly, though, if the opponent attacks with the Scourge Wolf, I think I'm probably just going to take it, because we get haste off the Marker of Crusader, and that gains back a bunch of life anyway. So, And if he kills our Stensian Keeper, we don't get the haste anymore. Hmm, no. No, thank you. Okay. Man, nah, we're flooding hard. Oh boy, big life swing there. Having the murder in hands we can, means we can safely double or attack the Mark of Crusader into a double... Ah, oh, never mind. <laughs> I was going to say we attack him into a double block and just murder one of the blockers. But that's obviously not in the cards anymore. We're taking a big hit here. We'll rack up at 18 now, so... We need to draw something worthwhile soonish, though, I would imagine. Innkeeper's a good one. That's a fine one. Knocks up on off of black again. Oh, I'm not happy with that. It can't be tapped. What? What does it mean? You drew a swamp anyway. Quit your, quit your whining. What does it mean it can't be tapped? Hmm. If I had the murder here, I'd be much more... Oh, wow, okay. Sweet. Mm, you're annoying. Oh, you're, you're helpful. Get him for more damage if we just do it like this. Oop. I 
if I'm choosing to a block, I will be killing the Ember I Wolf at this stage of the game, because it's a little scary. Yeah, I'm killing the Wolf here. Seems fine to me. Might have been playing a little fast and loose with the removal there, to be honest. But that Cavanian Hollow is going to get out of hand, so. And the Scourge Wolf was pretty annoying, especially if you can get first strike on it. We are pushing it completely out of gas, and I'm going to hold this line out here on the Determining Voice. No deck, actually, I should be thinking about that kind of thing. Many cards are good here, though. The Priest, the 4-drop, is amazing, because you just get to play the land, play it, and chalk something. It also just is a 4-4. Four -four. Um, I mean, Borrowed Hostility isn't a great draw, but essentially anything in our deck is a good draw right now. Ugh, that's really bad. Really bad for us. Really bad for us. Ick. Yeah. And well, then this is good because now we get to first strike this down. <laughs> I called it out as being a bad draw and it came up to prove me wrong, I guess. Oh boy. Oh, we just die, man. Now who's lucky, huh? All good. I mean, this would have been especially nice, but yeah, didn't get there that game. Um, let's try running it back. I don't think I want to make any changes. I think we can beat this opponent, for sure. I have faith. I would love to play first. Good hand, please. No. On the play now. On the draw, maybe. Maybe I could... Ah, uh, this is much better. Wow, look at this. Turn through this bad boy, maybe. If we draw a land. We do get to scry, scry I guess. So that's good. I try to do an instant speed to eat something. Opponent's just wrong here. Um, but I mean, they could be a newer player, and I mean, it's not. That's def I've never had a problem with that. I highly doubt that. I didn't. That's definitely not true. Definitely not true. <laughs> I just I don't know. I don't I don't I don't think that's the case. I mean it's impossible I guess that the innkeeper had a bug with it that I wasn't aware of, but I really don't think that's the case. Magical lands usually pretty good about that stuff, especially in newer sets. Now yeah, sometimes you know old things that crop up like Desecration Demon doesn't work properly at the moment because of the way they changed creatures targeting or something or player targeting or whatever um, but that's only in the cube so um, all the cards in standard tend to work pretty perfectly because they kind of make it so Please play. Please play the game. There we go. Q 
keep getting land on top. Oof, it's gonna be a no on that one. I don't even love that card. Swamp Sego. Give me that one drop from your dead weight, man. Give it to me. Here it comes. One drop to dead weight. Hup. Ooh, nah. No such luck. Nice. Now if I have two drop that my 3-3 can eat. And then attack me with it, please. Nah. Again, no such luck. Whoa. Playing that. For sure. Womp. Can empty out my hand here pretty quick as well. You now, if we draw a swamp, we can deadweight and vampire next turn. Oh, hold on, I'm not playing anything. Typically, not an amazing strategy. We have Chatty Cathy over here. I am incentivized to dump my hand as quickly as possible here. I mean, I can just dump the whole thing to Olivia's Dragoon if I really want, but all the cards in our hand are good, bar maybe Field Creeper, so I don't particularly want to do that. Sorry, my phone gone off. What are you doing? Let me attack you <laughs> for six on turn four and then play a three three for three mana. And then if I draw a swamp, kill two of your creatures and empty my hand and shock something and just run you over, hopefully. Come back, please. Maybe end of the stage where I have to pause the recording and wait for our opponent to return. Our opponent disconnected for some time but has now returned. Like I was thinking, I'm probably going to try and play the word of vampire on my opponent's turn this time. No reason to do it now. And there's no benefit to Field Creeper and Dead Waiting or anything like that. So, If he has the murder for our Blood Hole Priest, that's annoying, but it's not the end of the world. We're still applying pressure. I think this has my opponent's playing on a poor connection because of the way they're acting. Okay. That is going to get dead weighted, my friend. I can tell you that right now. I could almost kill my opponent if I just ditch my whole hand because I've taken the one with this thing's effect. What are you doing, man? You can see it's okay, cool. Um, bit of a sketchy round one there. It's a opponent who wasn't too hard to be playing against us. That's all right. Our reasonably well put together Madness of Vampire deck moves on to round two. Round two of this year, eight form, we got stung with the old no lander, so that's gonna have to be a mulligan, I'm assuming. Much better, much, much better. So, not great, but you know, oh, I probably want that actually. Yeah, I do want that at some stage. I mean, we are kind of relying on the card after that being a land. Or, you know, I guess the card, either the, either the next card or the card after that being a land. I guess I should have three, sorry. <laughs> I'm not counting this correctly at all. Great draw, though. Yeah, so we either, we either need this card or the card after this one to be a land. To kind of stay on curve. Perfect. I think I'm actually come to come to temptation. Now foul blood succumb to temptation. Ah, I can't say succumb to temptation. Succumb to dum 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 dum. Succumb to temptation. Succumb is a tough word to say. 
and succumb to is tougher still and succumb to tem is a rough time indeed coming up against blue green emerge which is a bad matchup for us let me tell you because that's a strong deck we might be okay though if we can keep them on the, on the back foot a little bit great very happy with that get that blood briar out of there blood briar is a scary card Oh, did Stensky and Keeper sting our opponent real bad? Oh, I think it might have stung real bad. That's the power of this card. Some, like, you know, in the, in the world where our opponent, say, doesn't play a land here, or even plays a forest, and then can't play anything, that's an incredibly powerful effect. On a card that's already playable, it's a 4 mana 3 3 that has a vampire. Now, I know we don't really have any vampire synergies, but, you know, they do exist. Though they aren't as prevalent as they were back when we had triple shadows. It really seems we put up on in a tough spot, but thinking this long means they have to play. They can play something. That's fine. It's not so bad. Can I cast you? Yes, I like you. How much does that cost me? Seven. I, oh, I can. No, I can't do both. And leaves me with two mana. But I'm probably going to do that actually. What I actually probably do with this. Makes more sense, doesn't it? Red line. That probably wasn't an amazing attack because that was holding this back. Mm. Cool. Happy to do that. That's fine by me. Cool. I think it's more crook necropod time, honestly. Kind of happy to trade this with the survivalists as well. I'm just lying on the big 7 7. Because it reduces the amount, you know, our opponent's ability to double lock it by quite a bit. Oh! Never mind. That blows. Uh, let's see if we can't fix this. We can't. Okay. Sad. But it happens. Still a one for one, kind of. Everyone gets to get it back. And we did get the drain off of this, so it's not that bad. But we got got pretty good. We need to know. We now know to play around Jace's Scrutiny in the future against this guy. Yep. Not blocking. Funnily enough. Okay. I have to imagine there are merge cards in our future shortly. People really underestimated Necropod back in Triple Shadows, and I think it's even better now than it was then. Menace is just so insane on a big 7 7. Well, you're getting bad sucks though. No emerge yet from our opponent. A bunch of cards that are good in emerge, though. So I have to imagine there are. Oh, no, no, that sucks. I have to imagine there are some on the way. Should we stop playing lands now? I only was playing them because we need to sack them to the Necropod at some stage, but I would like to discard them to the Dread Knight, too, so.
Our opponent, the blue, the blue green emerge deck is probably the best deck in the format, and our opponent seems to be running a pretty solid version of it, despite the fact that we have no actual emerge cards on the scene just as of yet. Just again, great and emerge, but this is actually really bad against our opponent. I imagine these two get thrown under, or he just takes it alternatively. <laughs> That's good though, it's chewing up numbers for this thing if this ever happens. Actually kind of a nice combo here. Because this forces so many, this clears your opponent's board real fast, which makes this better. You know, if we could flip this right now, it would wipe him. And we'd have a 6-5 flyer, which is probably enough to close out the game a lot of the time. My concern here is Lashby Lurker coming down. That's my big worry. Retrograde if I can handle Lash with Lurker would be bad. Either the hard swarm is annoying actually against Oh my god. Well <laughs> that's the power of clear shot, ladies and gentlemen. Very strong card. Um nothing that I saw that maybe want to take out. I mean this is annoying against his oh his zero power guys, but I mean we still get into life, so. Probably enough to leave it in, I think. Probably all right. Okay, we would love to play first. Yes, please. Stellar hand. I mean, the dream is to hit the Dragoon. But we will settle for 4 into 5 here. This hand is pretty slow, to be honest. Like, Markov Crusader helps recoup a lot of that by getting life. No, he doesn't. 2 drop. A 3 drop even would make this a much better hand. I may have been too hasty to keep this just because it's a good mix of lands and spells and powerful cards. Much better. Um, but really, you should oh, you probably shouldn't keep hands that don't do anything until turn four. <laughs> now that I think about it a little more, obviously it worked out fine in this case. Our opponent didn't exactly come flying out of the gates either, and um, we drew a three drop. It's a little awkward with this, but that's fine. Fine. Didn't have the double black to madness this in, so I'm just gonna play it. I guess I could play Duelist and attack with both and then hope to jungle the black to be able to madness the sim with that effect, but I mean this is not an effect I'm overly excited about anyway, so this is probably fine. Ah, oh, there you go. He would have been nice a while ago. Hmm. I'm willing to trade this, but not this, I think. So, coming at you. I'm going kind to of have to trade for this man. No? Yeah, there you go. Now hopefully we draw a line, we can get him with Duelist and play Dragoon in the same turn. Mm 
Okay. Ooh, make a 3 4. That's pretty good. Not good enough for this, mind you, but. Don't need to use the Dalton to do this here, though. I don't think I will. I think I'm gonna succumb to temptation. Hope to draw some type of play. No. Ooh, you're hello. Hello, friend. Hello, nurse. Oh, next I can play all of you. Attack him with everything. Transform this and just... Oh, well, that was a disaster. Probably not at all, actually. Play Pariah, play Dragoon, and then let's do Madness and Blood Hall Priest at some stage. Ooh, ouch. Okay. I mean, that clip wings, though. So I did play the Pariah. You know, this thing here. I should play the Dragoon first, though. Oh boy, that's getting scary. It's getting real scary. Okay. Ow. Yeah, man. I guess take it. Mm. It's going to be a tight one. Okay. It's pretty annoying. I won't lie. That's rather good. I do have to actually kill that, don't I? Back in, this does not come back in tapped. Oh, it does. Let's go five cards in hand. Jesus. And I guess I did get the token off the courier and the token off the explorers. So, got some clues flying around. And you get two toughness, just dies. So, it just dies to the Blood Hall Priest.
Oh. Yeah. That's probably all she wrote. In fact, it is, because we just die. Um, he taps four things. They are my four creatures. And then I am dead. I can chump that, and I take seven. I can chump that, and I take seven. Yep, yeah, that's all she wrote. That is all it's going to be for today, because we lost to a frankly very good looking emerge deck. Um, our deck I thought was pretty good, but sometimes you don't get there with a good deck. Um, thank you very much. I have been Dennis. Sorry we didn't make it to the finals of the Sade 4, but you can't win them all. Um, thank you for watching, and I will see you all next time.